Hello and welcome. We are back again, Monday Club. Um, yeah, so today we've invited old Savo back on, drinking wine as usual. Tell the truth though, you buy, that, that is two boxes of wine behind you. Jar Trampy Australian by, wine. Jar Trampy really by boxes going on here. of wine is. So, like, you could put that through the box, Dave, because it's part of your set dressed, isn't it? So you could put that through the box as a business expense. I should you shouldn't I get the VAT back off it if I could. <laughs> I can't believe it. But um, a bit low energy tonight. It is Sunday for those who aren't aware. I've been laying on the sofa. It's meant to be day. Friday. It's meant to be Friday, but <laughs> I blew it out. Um, what's the topic tonight, Jamie? Lighting. We're going to talk about lighting. Boring. Yeah, but to you, because you're a cretin, but to some people, I want to put a few things out there because we get good feedback when we do a technical, technical ish one. Or so that's called them webinars. Do you know what I did last week, though? Just so I, I can know how fuming my wife was with me. So it's a poo last... story. Please tell me it's a poo story. <laughs> it's not a poo story. No. Um, mate, well, yeah. I've, I've got poo stories for days. We'll have to do that later. But you know, I have this electric heater under my desk in here. Yeah. So the other day, like, and we all know by now, I'm a meter tramp. So I've got a, a pay-as-you-go meter um, in my house. I've never bothered to upgrade it when we bought the house. Um, I don't suppose you need to if it's bypass, do you? <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> so the other day, she put on like 60 quid on, on, on the meter. And within <laughs> like two days, it was almost gone. And she was fuming, absolutely fuming. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know what's yes. wrong with it. Anyway, four days went past. and we That's me today, £14.78 so far. Ooh. It's only just gone six o'clock. That's what I'm saying. £14.78. So she was, so she was fuming. Turns out... She phoned me up and she said, we've got to do something like, about this. It's costing us over a tenner a day. I don't know what's going on. And I was like... <laughs> I do. <laughs> I was like, I don't really know. Anyway, it occurred to me that the heater might still be on in my shed. I left it on for four days. Electric heater on full blast really for four awesome. days. I'll tell you what, just on the back of that, um, if, if anyone's looking to save energy, this is not sponsored because I don't bother, but um, I've got a meter cup made by a phone called Sheller. I'll pop the thing in the show notes. It goes straight to your iPhone. It's 50 quid. It tells you what your usage now. So, like, it's wicked for, like, you know, if you want to go around and turn something and look at the usage you're getting, call it, for the money, it can't be it beat. Called? They're called Sheller. I, I've got one under my stairs. I've just fit another one in my house. But it's about the size of a box of matches, genuinely. And it has two CTs that come with it, a big and a small, too big, too small. They'll go around means tells and that. There's a video on Instagram about it, actually. And it connects to your Wi-Fi. And on my phone now, I could probably put up my screen in a minute if I think about it. I can see my current usage. And I can see, as a flick stuff on and off, it goes live. It's it's absolutely amazing if you want to go around doing a bit of energy saving. So, and I'm telling you because you can flog them to customers. Yeah, go on. Em. How does it know how much the current price of uh, electricity is? So Dave just showed you an in-home display. Show you an in-home display, Dave. My in-home display got... is just... Just reset itself and it's now sounding an alarm. I would say they are notoriously alarm. bad at actually telling you what the money is. So on the Shelly device, it, it's got a voltage reference. It goes into a fuse or a break or whatever. It's got a CT with it and it just tells you your watts and your kilowatts. So you can see how many watts you're using right now and how many kilowatts you're using over the day. Then you just do your maths on that times it by 35 or whatever. But how but, do you know how much, how much do you, how do you find <clears> out how much your uh, units of electricity are costing you? Well, uh, off you go on your bill. bill. I've got, I've got the octo. Every, everyone's on the same bill, unless you've got some kind of lock in on some long term energy tariff, which I doubt at this point. Yeah, I, I'm on the I'm same fucking price cap. I'm locked in still till August next year. Oh yeah, what are you paying? For Amazingly, kilowatt? but yeah. But if anyone is like going around, like trying to work out what's going off, and if you see this is a big seller, I can't work out one more sparks not doing this year. These Shelly meters, they're reliable. There's other meters available as well, but these are bargain basement prices. What they are. Um, you could be flogging them because, like, if I literally turn a light off now, it will show on this, and I can see how much that single thing is using. And I think a lot of sparkers are missing out on a trick there because it, like, people will lap that shit up. You could fit it for 150 quid, 100 quid for fitting it, 50 quid for the thing. The customer might save that in a few months. Just can it to... detect the direction that it's going in? So, for example, if what? my solar PV kicks in, does it know? Because my energy monitor here knows when I'm exporting as opposed to when I'm importing. Well, Dave, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's actually got, each one comes with two CTs. So at the minute on mine, I've only got two, but I've just bought another two. I've got 
one connected to my fuse board, which I call my using my small power. So everything that goes to my fuse board is on one CT, and my battery is on the other CT. So I can see how much my battery takes at night to charge and how much it gives back, because it does work both ways. And on my fuse board, I can see how much I use a day. And I've just got another one because I want to put it on my mains tail to see if any of my batteries creeping back onto the grid. And like I say, for 50, 60 quid, honestly, if you're looking at me, it's like, there's a video on my Instagram about it, if anyone's dead interested. But if anyone's looking for a product like that, like I was for, for months and months and months, it, it's brilliant. And I think there's a good opportunity to sell it there. See, this goes back to the podcast I've done ages ago, right? The podcast. I think we've done a podcast ages ago, Jamie, about how it is up to the electricians to save the UK from the energy crisis. You got me. Yeah, like... If, That's if one thing that people... If, you say to, if, it, is it, if people must have customers moaning about the electricity usage too, I'm sure it'll happen. Dave's obviously got... You've got solar, haven't you, Dave? What, what do you check it against? Fuck all. You don't know what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. It against. Yeah, what have you got to right. tell you what's happening? Uh, I, well, the inverter I've got mounted in... It's in our bedroom, actually, because I it was one where I wanted to be able to see the gubbins. Excuse the croaky voice, I've got a cold. But so I can see exactly what it's doing every day. But I haven't got anything else on there other than an owl energy monitor from back in the day when I put it yeah, in about 2014. Which, you know, it's uh, at the moment it's stuck on 0 0.016 just because it's shut down at night. It should be zero, really. But uh, Honestly, that's the only thing that sort of gives me a, a, like an in-home display. But there's no smart app or anything with that as you would get these days because that's all. So, yeah, if you've, got a, bit of, if you've got a bit of old tech, if you've got something a little bit old or a bit cranky and you want it on your phone, which is a useful place to have it, that I can't, I can't fault them. And I'm, I'm, well, I'll be interested I'm in seeing that. I'm interested in seeing that. I'm going to video about it. I'll put, well, you, you could because I can't be asked, but I will put a link in the show notes to, the, uh, there's a playlist on Instagram of me fitting <laughs> it and going over it. And if anyone's like Dave, who's got something, maybe a bit of an older PV or my battery, it's a great battery, but the H, the user interface is dog shit. It really is good for just statting. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who've got customers who want to do that, who could flog them to. This is dead useful. Why are we making pod like this? This isn't what we do. <laughs> no, but I really like it because I think that is a really good, like, just think you buy it for 150, you buy it for uh, 50 quid and you install it for 150. Mate, people will want that all day long. I wish I brought one in. It's in the, it's, it's literally in the, under the stairs because that's where my main fuse board is. But yeah, is, this... you, going back to lighting, as, as that was about the subject, you can't trust people to really know that they're making an investment with these things. Yes, you can put these things in, you can charge for them, and people can save money. However, we keep on telling people, you know, you've got these old halogen lights, whatever here, get them changed out and get some decent LED ones in, and they will immediately start paying for themselves. We look after a, um, a, uh, a community center. Yeah. Where they've got, uh, it's, it's over 20 years old, this place. All their fluorescents are all failing all over the place because they're just end of life at that point. They've been used commercially sort of seven days a week for that time. And they keep calling us into maintenance. We keep saying to them, we keep on saying to them, you give us a room, we'll give you a cost study and analysis of how much it will be for us to change that out to LED. Uh, that's two years where you don't have to worry about any maintenance because we warranty everything for two years. A failure will come and sort it out. That's two years we don't have to worry about anything. And as soon as you do it, it starts paying for itself. We can tell you what the payback period will be. And they still haven't got us in. They still keep paying us to come along and change starters, change lamps. It all the lights Friday. and the sports all are failing. It's all really dark in there. And it's like, for fuck's sake, you just can't tell some people you know, <laughs> about these things. They just don't get it. In this garage on Friday, Dave, before we, before we went through the pod, I've got up here, there's two lights and an old bit of lighting buzz bar. And there were 58 watt tubes. Is that T5 tube? Is 49 or 58 watt? 49 yeah, watts. 58 watt, 1500 millimetres. Yeah. yeah, T5 tube. I think the T5s are 49 watt. So I, I got my little meat rat on my app and I, I worked it out. 277 watts. I ripped them down, I put two LEDs up. When I turn them on, I can't tell the difference in colour because they're good now, and I can't tell the difference in brightness. It looks exactly the same as it did. They're 110. So I've literally There's cut... Two, two things to say hours. about that. First of all, you don't have to necessarily change the uh, the whole fitting out. It doesn't have to be a baby and bath water mm. job. You can convert a fluorescent fitting to LED, something that will take an LED tube, so you've still got the option of taking out the tube once it goes duff and putting in another one without having to rip out the whole thing and repaint around where it used to be and all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. The second thing to say is... Uh, You've gone. I forgot the second thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> 
It's, it's easy. Like, if, if, it's a I'm saying to customers, then. if you're but if you've got a light LED when they first come out, I've been I've been following LED since it came out. Yeah, I got the first ones that just had white LEDs in that looked like dog shit, and I've followed them all the way through. And the thing that makes me angry at the minute is I'm gonna is why I wanted to talk about light tonight. But it's it's the fact that you throw the old light away, not just the tube. But I'll come back to that. But if you are burning and it's not LED and it's lighting, you are a fucking idiot. Would anyone disagree with that at all? I, but I'm just, just giving money away to your energy company. Just have some more of this, and it's going up again. I'm paying. I'm going to be paying thirty eight pence per kilowatt hour peak rate from January. Thirty eight. I've just just crossed the fifteen <laughs> quid mark now. Fifteen quid. It's almost it's worth. Today. Right. It's almost worth as a, a sparky like yourself, David. Does domestic who deals with the general public? Yeah. To get one, I mean, you know, the plug in energy, I've got one over there, can't reach it. I've got a plug in energy meter, I think they're called kilowatts, and it shows you how much it's using. You could be logging a five foot fluorescent tube round and a five foot LED tube round, and you could physically show them, but some people still won't get it, would they? But if you are burning incandescent bulbs, it, it's not just for a look or a feature, you literally pour it down the drain. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. As well, you have to buy the right thing because there's an awful lot of crap out there, especially on the likes of Amazon and eBay. Mm-hmm. And, um, and other sort of online mm. retailers and even some of the, the the brand marks you can't trust the trouble with led is it's a, a much much more complex technology there are far more components involved in getting that light to to come out and it only takes one component to fail and the whole thing's i've, I've seen you talking about what you in one of your videos you talk about a certain brand is that still the case or it got a favorite Philips really let us down yeah Philips, big brand you'd think better of them and we went round a couple of years ago putting Philips GU10s in everywhere. And after about six months, we were just getting one call after another, warranty failures. And like I said, we warranty everything for two years. It doesn't matter if mm. we only get 12 manufacturer warranty on it, which is all that was on these Philips lamps. We say to people, you pay us within five days of the invoice, two-year warranty on site, no quibble. Mm. If it fails, we'll come and sort it out. And uh, yeah, it was just one site after another where we would just have to strip out these Philips lamps that we could no longer take back. And go and put in something else, Mega Man or whatever. That's uh, what are you going for now? What's your go to? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we were putting in quite a lot of uh, Mega Man, uh, mm. Fusion because we get most of our stuff from CEF. Uh, you tend to pay more for it, but uh, personally speaking, we've not had any warranty headaches with that sort of stuff. It hasn't let us down. That so is the that is the problem with with Sparks, isn't it? The problem for Sparks is that. I would, you know, if you buy the LED lights I bought for this garage now, I'm looking at now, yeah? If that one breaks in two years' time, I will not be able to replace it with a physical lookalike. That's the problem. If you get an outside light, LED's moving so fast, you go and buy the replacement, it's a different shape, it's a different colour. That's the problem that we're going through that change, but that's well, just There's a big thing with program, JCC a few years ago, weren't there? JCC brought out their FG range of downlights uh, back in the earlier days of LED. And they they sort of went in everywhere. A lot of sparks were putting them in. We didn't, but we do. We were we were getting called out to sites where people said, "I had my kitchen done a couple of years ago by a guy. He got the electrician in. I don't know who the fuck mm. it was. They never left us any paperwork. But these two downlights here have failed. And you look at it and go, oh, I can see from the physical appearance that it's. Oh, uh, are they the, the ones that are? Are they the ones that is the whole fit and replacement? Yeah, it's an integrated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the uh, JCC recognised that there was a a, a problem with them because they extended the warranty but the trouble is you, you could just take out a light on a site that had a batch code on it that said made you know it had a, a, the, the batch code was off a date mm. code you could see when it was made you could just go back to any supplier and say hello i've got this duff jcc can you change it out it'd be like <laughs> nobody's changing shit out unless you've got the um original uh receipt the original oh, um, fuck invoice off. for it and if their customer didn't know who the hell had put it in in the first place, you were just like, well, sorry, but we're going to have to change up something else. Nope. And the new JCC ones were a, a different physical appearance. So you couldn't just stick one of them. because oh, That's you... why we avoid integrated. I ate it. And what that's one of the reasons why I talk about a light, one of the subjects I wanted to cover is that we had a wicked system where we buy a light and put lamps in it. So you, c- I still use a down light with a GU10 bulb because I could go and buy a GU10 bulb. And I rate, um, there's certain brands of GU10 bulb I really like. You'll never, ever catch me fitting any integrated down lights. Although when it comes to pizza style fittings and fluorescent tube looking fittings now, you can't get something that's replaceable. They, they seem to be gluing this sh- in the florist for a start. They're gluing the LED strips to the back plate. So you can't change it. You, you've got to throw the old fucking thing away, which is if it saves you a load of money, great. 
But surely in the end, these are putting more things into landfill. Is the problem oh, I've got with yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. There's two things to say about that, if I can remember. Sorry, sir. On, First mate. of all, it's supposed to be like an EU directive that says you should make manufacturers should be making things that can be maintained. So in that mm, you know, it's yeah. like a case of that bit's failed, throw away the baby with the bathwater and change the whole bloody thing. And the second thing is, uh, if we can do a conversion on a light fitting, like a fluorescent fitting in a commercial environment, we would rather do that than replace it with a new integrated fitting. Uh, but a good example, not that not one that we do, but my storage unit, I've got a storage unit uh, where we keep like cable reels and shit. Mm. all fluorescent and it's only been it's only been built a few years ago it was all fluorescent throughout until earlier this year when i walked in one day and noticed that it had all been changed to integrated leds and i was just looking at it thinking why have they bothered uh yeah because the, things were okay. the fluorescence would have gone for 20 years before they needed to change them and yes they would have cost more to run but you know the maintenance wouldn't have been that great on them but also they could have just wired out the ballast <laughs> in those fittings and changed the lamp in each one which probably would have been either quicker or the same amount of time mm. as taking each one down and replacing it. And that would have left them then with something where they, a, an individual tube could be changed to a yeah, new yeah, tube. Without so you can't get the all the tube. stuff out. Without, without all the waste, yeah. And that's what really <laughs> fucks me off about all this. It's the waste. because, And again, going back to our um, community centre, we want them to just give us a room. We won't be ripping the fluorescence down. We'll be changing, we'll be just wiring out the ballasts, wiring out the, um, the tombstones and putting in led tubes and it's like there you go that room you don't have to pay anything on maintenance for mm. that now and i can tell you based on how much you you pay for your energy and how much you use it per week how soon that will pay for itself and you'll find that within a couple of years probably less at today's rates mm. that you know you'll, you'll be the job will be done it'll be paid for itself and that's that's a couple of years where you don't have to worry about any maintenance at all on that and if it goes on for another 10 years without any maintenance then you're fucking quitting it's just nuts but you can't explain that to people all I'm getting they just, from this they just don't get it if you're selling my line all i'm getting from this conversation is i was right about what, about what that, you were about it, what? Like, it is basically up to electricians to save the uk from the energy crisis yeah but the problem is we, we, me and Dave have got the same beard as one about massive ways to throw away. One of the things about the tubes that you're saying there, Dave, is look at him go. So, all, obviously, all fluorescent tubes have four connections, two at each end. I've seen tubes that have double live and double neutral at one end, double live at one end, double neutral at the other. I've seen some that have a dead end and live and neutral. No one's standardized now they fit, which is a bit of a problem, but we can work around that. But the waste thing is driving me mad. So, Spark has got to drive mental. it, but. How the fuck do you sell? It's because every manufacturer does what they want, but the problem we've got to realise is it's the Wild West of the LED. The fact that 10 years ago we worked from a load of established lamps is because the lighting industry had been around for 100 years. Now we're right back. We may as well be in the 1900s or the 1850s or something with lighting because people just put out what the fuck they want and do it how they want. So you've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. You could end up rewiring a load of ballasts that one week takes a fluorescent tube because it's live at one and neutral the other. Then you might find in five years' time the standard is live and neutral at the same end and you've wired them all up wrong. So th then they're going to be coming back and, oh, you've done it wrong for me and all that. It's, it's, I'm sure with Sparky that does anything to do with lights, having the same problems at the mo moment, to be honest. See, I've got some really yeah. crappy lights in the living room. We just bought them off of uh, Amazon when we moved into the house originally. We had to sort of tosh it out, get it half sensible to live in. And um, they're, you know, they're ones, I can't, I don't even know. It's embarrassing, really. I don't even know what the, the bulbs are called. But they like, um, I think they're like a halogen one. You can't touch them with your fingers and they've got little tips on the end and you've got to poke them in. Oh, uh, they've got the two little curled over bits at the yeah. end, like a little teardrop. Yeah, a 10 watt something of a common. G9. Now. G9 yeah, if they're G9. 240 volts, G9, G4 yeah. if they're the buy pin. See that? I bet they're expensive to run. Yeah, 10 watts all day long, isn't it? It's, it soon adds up when and you've got a few of them. There's four in each one. Oh, you got, yeah, but you can you can get LED ones that you can just retrofit. The only problem is if you've got a dimmer, you need to get dimmable ones, and they cost a bit more. But uh, the trouble with this something like that, and then again, this is going off on a, another tangent here, is that there are too many lamp bases and lamp types around, and things like G nine, G four, or the little halogen capsules, they should have been fucking been shot years in the head when LED came out. Because you, you know what we've done with G nine is you're trying to get too much into too small a, a capsule, and I've got examples over on my bench over there. I've overheated and failed because there's just there's too much electronics in them. 
you know the uh, British plug is the best plug in the world. It's universal outside. The British plug is the best plug in the world. Uh, even Germans. Yes, one three six three. Even Germans will tell you that. Yeah, the bayonet cap light fitting is much better because you can have fit. You can have bayonet caps where the pins aren't live. You can't put it in backwards. You can't have a live screw. Yeah. Why has the Edison screw made a comeback? Is one re reason. I blame the likes Easy. of IKEA for that. IKEA, that's it. That's the the sole reason the Edison screws made a comeback. And now I'm fine. I've got a, in my kitchen. I've got a bit of trunk in with all brass lamp holes hanging off it, and they're all bayonet cap. And now I've got to go and change the fucking things to Edison screw because if I want a nice antique looking LED uh, squirrel case bulb, I'll, I've got to give it to them. IKEA's lamp range cannot be beat. It's fucking fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. But is, I've got uh, a the cap, screw now. The old B22D, I was very much a sort of uh, more of a British thing. Europe was always Edison the screw. So when you had the likes of IKEA coming onto our shores mm. in the 90s and stuff, they just imported the stuff that they used. I've got to be uh, honest. And it was also a way for them to sell you a light bulb as well because you I've buy this little honest. light fitting I've... and go, oh shit, none of my light bulb's going to fit. I'll have to buy <laughs> sounds, a fucking ES right. light bulb from. But the thing is, the ES fitting is crap because, as you say, you, you, you've you got live metal work that you don't have on the, the B22D. Yeah. So that's why you can use like a, a batten fitting in a bathroom, uh, a tra traditional batten fitting. There's no live metal work you can get yeah, to yeah, yeah. light bulbs in. But also because uh the the tangs on the on the, the especially tang. the cheaper ones they tend to sort of bend out so we had a call just last week where the lady said we've changed the light bulb the light's not coming on so we go all the way out to site take the front off let's screw the light bulb get the screwdriver and just to bend the tang out a little bit more because the yes oh the, the just bit at the bottom that touches the nipple oh yeah the, the, <laughs> you, you see the side or the bottom bit yeah uh, you've got, yeah you've got to turn the power off and just lever it out a little bit just because it doesn't make contact half the time what was but you going angry about this Sam? Someone's getting angry about something. What was it called? I fucking hate IKEA. Mate, the light... Yeah. I ain't going because... to IKEA. I won't go. Mate, the... I've got the, the fucking lamps they do, the bulbs they do, the lighting they do. Their smart home range is fucking absolutely out of this world for the money. For the I money, it cannot be fuck. beat. I'm not going to IKEA. I'm not walking around in I will a say, maze like a hand. It, it, it's a shame because IKEA pulled out of Coventry. They built this big white elephant store in Coventry, the only one in the country that was a multi-story store. They built that in 2007. Then when COVID hit in 2020, they were like, mm, you know what, fuck this. And they, just, they fucked off out of town and left it. So we haven't got one around here anymore. Just got I've, got the IKEA, I'm sorry. I've got the but IKEA their light bulbs range. were solid. Mate, the, the, honestly, it's worth, if you're sparking, going and buying one of each and selling to customers. Because I've got the, a few months ago, I've got a little girl and a little lad now. And I wanted a nightlight for the stairs. So we got a lamp. So I was like, oh, I'll get a four watt lamp for it. These things used to be freely available at a place called Mapping and stuff like that, yeah? I scoured the entire internet, can't get a four-watt night lamp. So I then looked for what smart home stuff was easy. Ikea, do a dimmable light with a dimmer and a sensor for like 20 quid. And it's absolutely brilliant. I've got the hub now, so all my lights turn on at dust and they all turn off at night. It's for, it's saved my it saved me so much money on my electricity bill just because I don't have to get involved. All the lights going come to on. IKEA is such a fucking chore. You it, well, you, you can break finished. it up. No, but fucking great meatballs though. Come on, fucking. Yeah, that's what I'm meatballs. saying. Go go round till you get bored. Then go in the restaurant. Then go round a bit more. Then buy yourself a load of dime bars. The way out. Dogs as well. It's, like, it's, it's bollocks. You go in there. You're walking around. You're looking at a load of shit you don't really want. It's all fucking like got no soul in there. You're walking around. She asks you about some towels and shit you don't care about. You walk down this bit and you see some other shit you don't care about. Mate, Where it's the like fuck hell. are you going to go, fat man? Home base? <laughs> I know I what you're saying. Go to them places. I know what you're saying, mate. And then their kitchenware, uh, their kitchenware is shit. It's fucking garbage for students to take away from yeah? Uh, but they the do do some good stuff like everyone loves the Kallax, but the lighting is fucking out of this world. The squirrel cage lamps they do, big glass bulbs, nice filaments in. They look fantastic and... It's just something you could be offering. Light. Because... Does it give out light? Yes or no? That's all I care about. The whole thing is just a lot of I always found I always found with IKEA that their LED lights, even from the early days, fucking uber reliable. I've still got some. They that, don't make any I, shit. Must, I, I've got some that have been there for twelve years that are still working. Now I couldn't say that for any of the brand. They, I, See, they, they do make shit stuff. Mound drawers. We got a load of mound drawers in our house, and they are fucking pony. Electrically wise, though, if you go onto Big Clive on YouTube, who's a very famous electrical YouTuber, yeah, 
he does a takedown of an ikea usb socket and um, they do a usb plug i use them in my ass as well and they've got three two amp plugs on the bottom can't remember what they're called but i'll try and link it in the show notes yeah he took one apart i thought it was going to explode how excited it was about how well made and safe it was so now my entire ass has nothing but those charges dotted around because they're good they turn themselves off they've got three two amp sockets and that is how all their electronics are made. You don't need to worry about IKEA's electronics setting your ass on fire yeah. because they don't want to get sued a million times. So the the, the stuff's high quality. I agree with that. I agree. I think they're. But I yeah, and it's, it seems it's unusual. Not here anymore. It's all budget. It is budget, but they know where to cut their corners, and the the lighting is is great because they know that people want big glass squirrel cage bulbs, smart home stuff. And then while you're in there, obviously, you're going to buy 5,000 dime bars and the fucking Degegra or whatever it's fucking called. I don't, li- I don't like dime bars. That's a crap chocolate. Are you are you on crack? <laughs> don't like dime bars? Don't like dime bars. Listen. What about art the dogs? Only, the, only, the, only, uh, the only chocolate I eat, really, is either a Twix or Bourneville. No, mate. Have you ever tried just... Ikea Spunk? Spunk? <laughs> what is Spunk? Spunk? The good thing about going to Ikea is if you if you do a bit of YouTubing as well, you can get loads of comedy moments in Ikea, can't you? You can be sat there reading a book and next thing you know, like some people walking past you. You can go in the cafe. Breakfast is good in Ikea. Go early when it's dead. The breakfasts are cheap and decent. You can stock up on all your shit, your diggery and your spunk, and then you can fuck off. I've, I've always really wanted, one thing I really want to do is I want to get a bag of cans, go to Ikea and see how long it is for so it throws me out. Just walking around, supping tins, sat in someone's living room or a living room. That is so a was... really crap thing to want to do. Dream. You're still not going to IKEA, are you, Sam? Even though no, I don't could... like IKEA. Do you know what? I don't like going shopping. I don't like going shopping. I... Do you know what? It's as I've as I've hit forty, all of these dumb things that are a chronic waste of time, I'm really <laughs> conscious of. Like, I don't want to do anything that wastes what, my like time. work. <laughs> do you know what? All I do is fucking work at the moment. It is killing me. But you know what I do like... miss shopping-wise? Sorry, mate, I cut you off there. You've got a bit of a delay on my mic. Go on, what were you saying? You know what I do miss shopping-wise? And it's electrical-related. Funny love, proper electrical content. The trade counters aren't like they used to be, are they? There's no bants at the trade counter anymore. No one... It just seems to be a bit dry. Yeah, it it's like... like a place to meet and have a chit-chat in the morning, have tea and toast and that. Nah, Edmondson's ain't even got a fucking coffee machine near me. It's bollocks. CEF always have my sitters. One. I keep telling them to get a fucking coffee machine. My sitters don't have a coffee machine. They had one before COVID, a really crap one. All the other ones around here, you get a decent latte, but my local one doesn't do yeah. one. And I, I've complained and complained, and uh, they've said that it's just too expensive. I've called them out before. Edmondson, Nottingham have not got any hot drinks facilities. I don't think they've got a toilet. I went to Edmondson in Bissom, which is in Blackpool. Big shout out to Edmondson in Bissom. They've got one of them. You know the ones you get in like Shell service stations, the touchscreen job that does everything? They've got one of them. Like, if I'm in Blackpool, I'm going there. I'll trudge all the way across Blackpool to go to that Edmondson. That's the, that's what happens, wholesalers. There's, there's a there should be a Costa order. concession in every one or a Starbucks <laughs> yeah. concession. They're missing and out they on do millionaires Just tables outside. Millionaire shortbread as well, please, while there's I'm getting some Edmondson's raw in Croydon, I'm pretty sure, has a calf in it. Yeah? Yeah. Could anyone back that up in the comments, please? Are they, is, it, is the crap with wholesalers they're all individually owned or something? Or the all in why is there no standardization? There must be franchises or something, yeah, something like that. If there is a calf in one, in, if there's a calf in one in Clapham, I will go and do a no, not Clapham, we'll Croydon. We'll it, do the podcast on their live. Uh, um, where is it? Um, is it there's a one, what's it called? It's not Fisher's Farm. Um, oh, uh, this is too London for me to even begin to understand. Factory Lane, Croydon. Factory Lane Croydon. If anyone can back that up in the comments or let me know on social media. It definitely we, used to have. It definitely could, used to have. We could bang in there on the morning, see how long we get away. We're drinking free tea and recording the podcast from there. Hey, listen, I'm drinking, Sam. That. Sam, what are you drinking? Uh, this is... Fucking hell. Uh, Woodford Ooh, Reserve. That's a lovely bottle. That'll make a nice lamp. See, I, right. I thought about doing shit like that. And have you ever seen the Crystal Skull Vodka? Yeah, mate, I, 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 I want one, but they're like eighty quid, aren't they? I've well, got, a, I bought, I've got a miniature. I bought a uh, Crystal Skull vodka um, bottle from like a boot sale for a fiver, and I turned it into a lamp, and it and it looked good for about ten minutes before I thought that looks like a big pile of shit. 
No, I can't, I've got a load of a. Uh, I've got some nice bottles in the bar that are full of marbles. Yeah, but you've with, also with a lump of you've also in. got fucking trunking in in your kitchen. Like I put a picture of my trunk in my kitchen. No, because it's got it's got um hanging out of it. It's got um your washing. Covered, it's got cloth covered singles to brass lamp holders and and big big lamps. It looks nice. <laughs> it does. I remember <laughs> tray in, in in my old flat in my old flat where we used to be lads. I had a, a 12 inch tray room down my kitchen with down lights in it and speakers. See, an old metal conduit to have fed. It might, that might be cool, but it was all like industrial looking because, uh, to be honest, any electrical work I do around my house is industrial looking because I can't do anything else. <laughs> um, what I wanted to talk about is when it comes to lighting. When I was at college, we had this teacher called Ed, and he was, you know, that there's always one really good teacher and he's come in shirt and tie and he was proper like he knew everything he was a proper sparks mm. and then he switched over to teaching for like he's, he's about 65 at least and he's just doing it like giving back um ed from bromley college i wonder if he's still there anyway <clears throat> he always said to go into like specialize in something and he said like specialize in lighting like garden mm. lighting and stuff like that there's real way of like it's a real rewarding way of making money. What do you guys think about that? I will give you a, a quick rundown. Well, I, I've done lighting design, not not properly, but I've done a bit. Oh, of but it, of yeah. course you have, Jamie. Is there well, anything done, you haven't done? We used to do commercial, so you have to get into it because, like, if anyone's ever been in, there's a really good shop in, um, you know, clothes shops. We've, I'm sure I said before on the podcast they make shit look good because of lighting. No, they it, don't. No, they listen, do not. Not I'm marks and man, when you're right? there, Yeah, listen, I'm a fat man. Right, I said lighting, mate, not shadows, <laughs> <laughs> not miracle boxes. But when I go into the changing room, I always end up looking at myself, feeling a hundred times worse. Like I look at it and think, "Fuck, is that my reflection?" I'm... And then I get home and I look in the in the mirror at home and I'm like, "Well, this is much better." And I, I don't know if I've got like body, body dysmorphia when I walk into them changing rooms, but it... none of them make me look good. You're not going to the kids' shops, are you? What kind Take of a man God. walks into a changing room? You're not just no. buy your clothes out of screw fix and Asda and walk home with them. And... Well, here's the thing. Because <laughs> I'm, stress on mail order. I'm fat in a weird way. So my arms aren't fat. My torso's fat. My legs ain't fat. Where's your mirror from, Skegness Beach? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's one of those circus mirrors. <laughs> I, I'm going to try now. Oh, sorry, go on, mate. Oh. But them changing room uh, lighting, that changing room lighting is death. If you were in a cool kid shop, person. like uh, most of the cool kid shops, the ones, oh, I can't remember because I'm not cool anymore, I don't go in them, but the cool kid shops that have good lighting. I'm going gear- to give two tips away in this in this podcast about lighting, yeah? This is the first one. So if you're trying to flog someone some lighting, this is a good thing to say. There's three types of lighting. There's mood, task, and ascent. So mood is like restauranty, like I'm doing with this podcast now, like having little lamps behind me and stuff, although it's bad tonight. That's like setting a mood, making a mood. Dave's got a mood lighting off there. Look, Dave's mood lit is set. Yeah? These it's, tasks... like it's a fucking halogen heater on it. Oh, yeah. It's keep me fucking this warm. task, which is, see this light here? This is a task light. This light's only purpose here is to light up this corner of our set. That's its job. It's a task light. And there's a scent. A scent's what Sam's got there. You see how there's a good overall light? That's that. All good lighting schemes have task, mood, and a scent. They can have one all three in any combination of mixture, and they are that is what you create something that look, looks good out of. So if you want to speak to your customer, like say you've got a big garden, you want to light it, the light you put in there to make it so you can walk around, that's called a that's called a scent light, and that's all the general lighting. Then if you light up a big tree to make it look like a feature, that's task lighting and all that. So task moon and scent, everything falls into to one of those fair, categories. I just mocked you for being a big head and know it like I've done everything. But you're actually making some good sense there. Perhaps you should do a YouTube video on. I don't want to do YouTube videos, um, but imagine it's a pie chart, yeah, a big circle. No, you do the worst YouTube videos on the internet. I, c- I can't be asked with it. I just do it and I feel like it. I can't be asked with it. All right, maybe it will, but what, imagine what it's lighting a pie chart. do I have to put in place to get a blowjob off the wife? What lighting? That's mood. Do that's mood. So now you're talking <laughs> mood. mood. Right. Okay. okay. That's cool. Uh, do a YouTube video right. on that. It's, YouTube it's, video on that, and we're in. Uh, why don't we do a combined one? We'll come and do a lighting one while your missus sucks me off. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. Listen, that's called miracle lighting, and I need some. 
Like, I'll, I'll you, finish. I'll if, tell you, what, I'll finish this. If someone invented bit that lighting, if someone invented that lighting, it would be, <laughs> it, would be <laughs> it would be sold out in a day. <laughs> Fucking right. This is meant to be an education podcast. But yeah, mood, task, and ascent is what you need. Also, I I've got this. This is Integra LED. I've got their old catalog right. It's just got. It's the last good lighting catalog I've seen, and it's got all the colours in. So. 5,000 K, do you know what that means? Or where you'd use that? I don't know, on a spaceship? Cut, right, so let's go see Task this. Lighting. See this one? This is warm. It's warm white. So downlight, we'll talk downlight so everyone knows that. The the one that looks like it belongs to the fucking chip shop, like a fluorescent tube, the cold white one, that is four, three, that's 4,000 K. The, the, the downlights that look warmer and creamer and like more like, my, like a skin tone that's lit, that's 3,000K. 5,000K is, you know, like if you go into an Audi showroom or some rowdy car shop, they'll be using that to make all the paintwork look good. And then down at like 1,800 is like a, a lamp and that. And all you've got to do is look at the colour rendering scale in Kelvin for lighting, and you can chat like that to a customer and sell them stuff like, oh, don't, a 5,000K lamp in your bed, you'll never sleep. If you buy an 1,800 one, that's like a nice, warm, cosy, light and all that and just knowing about task mood ascent and the color rendering scheme of lighting makes you sound a lot more professional when you're doing it well do you know what's interesting about that if say like we're all over the well i'm a, i'm 40 jamie mm-hmm. i think you're 40 now 40. Dave's Dave's 40, 40, Dave. at least 70 <laughs> anyway if you have to 40 get, once if you have to get <laughs> up for a wee in the night and as we're all above 40 we do every night now it's a thing that just comes I've got on very you. good penis control. Good penis muscles. I haven't. Um, no way I have in the up 50 times a day. Uh, 50 times a night. It drives me insane. If you turn the light on, the chance of you having a restful sleep plummets by like 80%. Because the melatonin in your system... Yeah. As soon as, light, as, soon as you're exposed to bright light, dissipates. It starts to wake you up, doesn't it? Which is why I have a night light on the stairs. Because my bathroom's off my staircase. I can That's what I'm saying. See. So, you so need I have a dim have, light all night. You need to have a very oh, no, dim sounds light. Like Facebook science, to the toilet. Hey? I, I, I will say, I think lighting makes people happier in their home. It makes people feel at home so, and happier in the home. My mum always moans at me because I don't really have like little <laughs> lights. So we just have the main light on. We just dim it down a bit. But mm. my mum was all, a big proponent of having like a little light over there and a little light over there, and that sort of the ambient light, if you like. Yeah, yeah. The, the, when I yeah. when I did my ass up, I I when I was younger, I like fucking bright light everywhere. I wanted everything to be bright. I wanted to be bright and bright, and these down lights fucking everywhere. And now, as I've got older, I've turned more dad. And I'm like, turn that fucking big light off, and so I've got lamps around, and I prefer the lamps around. It makes <laughs> me feel more homely and cosy. Here's something funny. One, like my best mate built his own house, right? And he asked me to do the electrics, but he lived all the way in Bognor. It was long. Anyway, <clears throat> his living room is massive, and I kind of overspect how many lights are in there. So every time <laughs> I go to his house, I look up, and he must have twelve or fifteen <laughs> lights up in in the ceiling. Halogen, five hundred watts, like. <laughs> and they're halogen as well. They're not even LED. <laughs> Every time I look at them and think, "Fuck." <laughs> we've we've like, all had a job like that. I've got I've got a job where again, same sort of thing. I put in like twelve donuts in someone's living room back in my very early days, and uh, every now and again you get the on this day picture come up on your phone. You're like, "Oh fucking hell!" <laughs> every time I'm sitting there, I'm like, "Ooh, that's twice as many as I ought to have been." Though. <laughs> so now every like he's a big whiskey drinker, same as me. So every time I take a, a an expensive bottle of whiskey down just to sort of make up for it without telling him. That fuck your life. Who, who, who teaches that though? It's trial aren't it? Like you can with down lights, especially. I've got a bit more on downlights. You put them close to a wall, they wash the wall nice, don't they? You put them in the middle of the room. They... But who t- who ever tells anyone about this? Like uh, where to place lights in rooms? I have to put them in there. It's not something that you really see taught, is it? And it's not something you five day course people like David got to know, is it? Trial <laughs> <laughs> and experience. That's all you got to go really, isn't it? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I've got some, I've done the same. I put you some can do your fucking light. AM2 oh. and still not know that. Well, they don't teach it yet. They don't. T- the problem is lighting, like we've discussed tonight. I got, I got, I want to talk about lighting after Sam spoke about his lighting the other week where he fucking totally bulged up an entire warehouse. 
But when and I got listen, thinking about it, I was like, oh, there's this, this, that. warehouse has been to... signed off. That's been signed off. That's handed over now. Till it rains. <laughs> no, it's been handed over. I've done an excellent job at repairing that. Excellent. It's just, and he did, and it's just like, this whole lighting thing is just like, people just, oh, where do you want your lights? To a customer, when it should be like, how do you want to light it? How do you want it to be? And it's so much more technology advanced than the colleges or anyone to give you credit for. And unfortunately, the only way you're going to find out about it is probably looking in people's bump like this or going to shops that cool kids buy their clothes in and looking around. And I think every Sparky loves looking around, don't they? Ah, oh, they've done stuff. But it's um, no one teaching you. Know, I thought it was an interesting topic to cover. Do you, know but... do you know what's funny when you say that? In Crawley, so that's like one of the, it's on the way to Gatwick. Um, there's a Primark in Crawley that I don't know the tray for. And it's yeah. really, it's really like it's one of my proudest bits of tray, like <laughs> triple piece, like tray, all that sort of stuff. It is the bollocks. Um, and every time I go there, I look up and I'm like, I did that. We did a job. I'm not saying the customer's name. They're, they're quite a flash clothes shop. I'm not saying their names. Can't fucking remember. But um, have you seen? As if I say what it is, everyone's seen them. Yeah, quads. So it's a square light, about six hundred thing, and it has four individual lamps in it. And you can angle the lamps in any direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll have seen them in clothes shops because they are the backbone of clothes shops. And this particular shop, the lighting design was basically the backbone of the entire thing. So everything was designed rather light design. So all the tables were screwed down because they were lit above. And they'd have stacks of jumpers on them. And all the quads were set up. The quads had a little tube on them. And in that tube, you put a laser. And then you pointed the laser where the product was going to go. Mean? That's how advanced it was. In That's how advanced shop lighting is. I can't remember the name of them. There's oh, a couple you know of cool shops. How much do you think those those shop lights cost with a laser built into them? Just listen, that is going to be. I presume off the laser's the not built in, but the laser's there for the installer. The, the laser, laser goes the into installer. the tube, and you take it back yeah, out of the line. Take it, it back out. Another good one is Aldi garages. Aldi have good lighting, and it's all 500k in there. And if you use 500k color, you have to break it up with other things. So if you took all the cars out, this it, you'd be blind. They do clever things with it in there. So it's, it's just worth big, looking around. Lighting. How expensive is lighting for what it is? Oh, yeah. If you get, I mean, I've got the uh, Aluma one. Integra is my go to. At the, well, last time I was contracting, Integra was my go to bulk purchase warehouses. The, no, you know, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, if you go to like, <laughs> um, where I used to live, there's a place called Waldenham, right? It's in Kent, but it's right up near. Right on the outs outskirts of the M25 towards Surrey, there's a place called Waldenham. And down mm -hmm. there is a lighting shop where there used to be a lighting Yeah, shop. yeah, but they're all on. And I'm not joking. You go you go in there and there'd be a there'd be a light in there and it'd be four thousand pounds. It'd be yeah. a chandelier and it'd be quite beautiful, but you'll look at it and go, Why is that four thousand pounds? I know exactly it's... what's gone into that. Because it is. <laughs> They're, they're we get, we get a lot of customers who spent hundreds of pounds on lighting and they ask us to fit it. And you look at it and think, this is cheap Chinese shite. Yeah. Well, it's it's you know, well it's got a little white on block it. on it for you to connect your cables to. It's like, yeah. I ain't going in there. Well, it's pretending to be class two because there's no fucking earth wire going to the metalwork <laughs> on it. Yeah, if, that's anyone work, some good light, if anyone wants some, if that, that stuff is like my, when I was contracting, that's my basic, oh, the, the, the weird ass and the officers associated with it. But if I was doing any restaurants or anything like that, I used to use a company called Aluma, and their rep would be like, "Oh, what's going on?" You bring go, yeah, I've got, a, I'm doing a restaurant. He go, "Oh well, yeah, when do you want to have a look at it?" I go, "Well, we'll we'll book like two days in," and their rep would come and sit with you for at the computer for days, because it was so their, their range, their catalog was like the, the yellow pages, and they knew what you was buying, and that if you'd rang them, you were willing to spend some money, and they'd sit with you for two or three days over the course of the project, and just and just flog your line because they knew what you was after, and then when the bill could be like. Fucking like five hundred pound for a hanging light and that, but um, I I just want some for my ass to be honest. And I went on Amazon and bought the cheapest ones I could find. <laughs> so See, can't be asked. My, my daughter this year, so she's um four in April. Anyway, she's like we're driving around and she's like, oh look at those lights, Daddy. Oh, I want one of those on our house. And so my wife's quite soft and she's given into it. She's like, I think we should get some lighting for outside. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, I don't know if you've noticed. Not it, paid to fucking eat the street, Doc. 
you know what I mean? <laughs> if I don't know if you've noticed it this year, but there's a distinct lack of Christmas lights on the outside yes. of houses. Mine out there right now. Allow me to adjust the camera, and you might might just just catch the. There you go. Oh, there, yeah, there just, you go. just there. Yeah. Some some going on there. Look at, little, the... look at his little look at his little globe, the flash bastard. Yeah, but oh, look yeah. at all that. Look at all these breakers in up there. Oh yeah, and I see once told me off for that. What? What for think? reusing breakers? No, for well, I, I, I can't remember what the uh, I had my assessments and um, I, I can't remember how it came up. But I said, "Oh yeah, I got some spares for the for this board." Uh, you might have seen them in the office there. He said, "Well, you shouldn't have them uh, displayed out where uh, dust can get into them." That's sort of oh, stuff. what a load of fucking shit! Oh, NRC Most spectators. people have them in the back of their fucking van, for Christ's sake! I'm not oh, planning on joining not. the NRC again, but all the NRC inspectors, yeah, get in a fucking sea. All right, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> that, do you know what? I hate yeah. people like that. That is that sort of bullshit. That that like they they don't work the job. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just like, oh. Dust could, yeah, I could walk outside and a meteorite could hit me in the head. It's yeah, unlikely, but shut on, the fuck up. He's got his breakers on din rail in a, what I believe is an annex to his house, stored correctly the right way up in probably a heated room, whereas Bill the Bobbing Builder's got him chucked in an old fucking gorilla tub with a load of plaster dust and he'll still fit him, won't he? <laughs> what do you the want? The trouble with a, a, any assessor is they've got to have you on something. They've got to that's get the somewhere. best they can get me yeah, on, if that, that's the best they can get me on, that? I'll take no, it. No, if they didn't do that, if they didn't try and get you on just a little thing, they won't, people won't think they're a bunch of fucking raging arsholes, to be honest. They'd be a lot no, more friendly. You know what? Why don't they just go round, assess you on what they need to assess you on and, and go away? Because Instead they of... need to pick you up for something. Because when don't. they get, they do. Because they get audited by their big whoever fucking. We don't know who's in charge. We're still trying to work out. Are you making it. this up? Because I feel no, like no. You genuinely, are. If, if I audit you to say uh, whatever you're doing, and I don't find anything, the person that audits me is going to go, "Why aren't you finding anything? Find something." So to be fair to our see auditors, Fuck they're only that. picking stuff up because they're being audited again. Nah, I'm not, see, look, see, I hate, I hate all that. When a man asks, then I see, but I will actually admit that I think that is what happens. So you know, just to say, uh, in my up. NIC assessment this year, he had me on nothing at all. Nothing Ooh, big balls, Dave. And do you know what? I know I know people who get audited by the NIC, and he just tells them, listen, this is a book. This is what I know from the book. This is not what I know from the book. Fuck off. <laughs> I pay you. You Like, you can't fail me because I pay you. Now, fuck off. I suppose, though, to be fair, we can't moan about shit five-day wonder sparks doing work and then simultaneously moan about the high standards of an NIC inspector. Yeah, but yeah, there's a happy medium. Standards. There is a happy medium, but, yeah, but we, we are moaning about Yeah, but they're not high things. standards. They're, they're nonsense standards that they come out with just to get you on something, and then you go, oh, I've done that, and they go, oh, okay, sweet. It's nonsense. It's all nonsense. I must admit that when I, I was an IC for once. I'm the inspector I had. I just felt like he was a, he was looking for trouble both times he came. But I had, when I had another one, he was all right. He was very helpful. But I think it's who you're getting it. Their, it's their like a job. librarian's job, isn't it? It attracts a certain type of person. Yeah, but their job isn't to be like a driving inspector, <laughs> which is a real, which is a real thing where they they've got a criteria that you pass or fail on. NIC is just a company that set up and they charge you money to like they charge you money each year and each. T- all year round to do it to um to uh sort out your 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 test results essentially all they do is pass your test results to the local council that's it it's, it's, it's yeah, the we've that set us off on a whole other tangent here it, well, oh, that's it what winds happens. me up it winds me up because who are they who is this div that comes round who never really made it as a contractor comes round and tells you how you've got to be a contractor it's the dumbest shit that anyone's ever invented <laughs> it's, it's not when you park your car dumb. in glasgow you park your car in glasgow and a little kid comes up to goes do you like your car do you want me to look after it for you that's the nic <laughs> that's, that's what the it NIC. is it's, yeah, it's it is. a racket it's a racket no, they're because... all rackets though because unfortunately it no, and it doesn't matter that we're electrical You've got the ECAs, the NAPITs, the NICs. There'll be more of them, yeah? The, your, every organisation's got these same rackets and they're yeah, full of people dumb. in suits. It's dumb. It's yeah. like, why are you listening to this geezer? He are they called think... Quangos? Do they call, do you used to call them Quangos? I, is it a Quango? I think it is, isn't it? Like, yeah, you get them in I rail. I used to work in a government Quango. I bet you oh, did. I worked at, yeah, the NHS place <laughs> I worked at was a Quango. That no, but just what I'm saying is... To... This geezer money. that comes round and assesses you and your performance within 
within within your business sphere can't run his own business. That's why he's working for the NIC on a wage, on a bumpkin, brokey wage. It'd be interesting what they're on because then you could you could prove that though, couldn't you? Because if they're only good, I've got to say, the, on there. the guy who comes to me, he knows his onions, he knows his shit. Yeah, and I, like I say, I've had I've had both experiences, one one way and one the other. The NIC guy was always all right with me, my NIC guy for years. Um, the guy in Nottingham, anyone from Nottingham know who he is. Then he got replaced by a guy, and I went, oh, the guy, I can't remember his name, but he was in the NIC. He was the NIC man. He'd come from an electrical firm. You'd chit-chat with him. you go to the meetings and chit-chat with him, yeah. Then he got replaced by a new guy. And I remember said, oh, so uh, whereabouts did you work? Where did you do your time? And he's like, oh, I'm not an electrician. I'm a, I, I've got a marketing degree. And I was there like... See you later. Oh, that's the last oh. time you get any money out of me. He didn't have a fucking clue. But now that's, maybe that's what I'm saying. saying. I, I got no problem with some ex engineer, some ex uh, ex guy who's had his ass in the grass coming along. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> pointing out the um, the stuff that you may have missed. In fact, I quite like the NIC guy picking me up on something that I've got wrong because that's how I fucking learn. That's one of the reasons ways yeah, I, yeah. I learn is like. Because he's had me on some things, some very valid things over time, where I've gone, oh, fucking hell, you're right. I'm, 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 I'm doing this wrong. I think and, everyone and that's that fine. Then. You know, just something, I've just noticed something really weird about Savo. He just blinked with one eye. Do you know how weird that is? Do you, do you know, I, I, I you blink in fact. Who's, has I, who's seen the Muppets Christmas Carol? I don't know I've seen the Muppets Christmas Carol. No. No, are you bonkers? <laughs> the Muppets Christmas Carol is the Muppets with Michael Caine in. Top fact, because the Muppets don't blink, Michael Caine doesn't blink for the entire film. Do you know what? That's you're saying I look like Michael Caine? Well, listen, no, so you don't blink. All I'm going to say is... <laughs> a lot of people know that. You're wearing Engelbert Strauss. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say the word, but there's only a certain type of people that wear Engelbert Strauss. Yeah, paedophiles and me. No. But if I if I ever buy Engelbert Strauss, because it is good stuff, mm. I cut that tag off. I don't. It's a badge of honour. I mean, I've got the jeans on as well. In fact, I might be wearing Engelbert Strauss boxer shorts. No, I'm wow. not tonight. Wow. You you need to you need to sort yourself out. If you no, 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 no. Stop, 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 type... stop. I'll tell you why. Why? Yeah, because I've got a limited company. And if it's branded Engelbert Strauss, go through the box. That's why I wear their jeans. And where there's trainers, the boots, the lot, all goes through the box. You need to get on the Look, scam, mate. Actually, you don't have a limited company. You work on the cards. So stop no, I've got a limited company still as well. That's why me and my wife, well, I saw a couple of jokes this week on Instagram with people doing like, oh, self-employed Christmas do. It was just a video of them, yeah? Um, if you're a limited company, you're allowed to have a board meeting and you're allowed to have a Christmas do. So the other year for the board meeting, me and my wife went to York for the whole weekend in a five-star hotel on the train, and that's a legitimate business expense. I, so might, put like, man, I might put Amanda's birthday drinks. Like yeah, no, you're weekend. a sole trader. You need to get on the limited company, Sam. Like that plastic dog turd I bought for that video the other week, that's a that's a legitimate business expense because it was using the video. Last week, I went for di uh, like <clears> a <throat> nice dinner. I had a, I had a nice steak. We went out for dinner. We went out for drinks. We had a whole night to ourselves. Mm. If I had a limited company, I could put that on there. No, you couldn't. But if you called it a board meeting, you could. Exactly. And I've, oh, I've, I've Christmas the party. In. It's in December. Her birthday is in December every year. You'd always notice if we have anyone on. I think I said to someone last week, says, "Oh, are you, just out of interest, if you want to say, are you a limited company or are you a, a sole trader?" People go, oh, "Sole trader." I just think, mate, get limited. You can just get away with so much more. Why is my accountant not told me the ten years of Christmas yeah, dues I could have fucking shit. had? <clears throat> I went skiing. I went skiing for a board meeting. and I, But while I was in the ski resort, I had to go to another hotel and book a boardroom for an hour to justify the fact that it actually happened. And I put the whole fucking lot through. And that's legitimate. So, like, you've got to work systems. I'll tell you why your, your account is shit. Because you're always moaning about tax. Um, VAT. Yeah. Yeah, well, to be honest, uh, I had to go to that register this year and it's not been the problem that I anticipated it to be. Exactly. What, 20% off fuel? It's great. I fucking love it. <laughs> I'm still that registered now, though I run a very small company. I think it's, I don't see it as a problem. I can see why, if you're dealing direct to the public, it's a problem because you've got to put the VAT on. There's other people that don't. But for me, I think it's, I, uh, why have you not? Yeah, it, 
it was a problem for me five years ago, back in 2017, when I was VAT registered before. Um, because but, people did, but is that because prices have gone up so much you can still remain competitive against the other people? Or I, I think, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I think one of the main reasons is that uh, my customer base now is just so big, and people know that I'm not going to fuck them around. That mm. VAT or not, it's like they're not going to go anywhere else. <laughs> What I generally say is, though, because we are giving out some decent advice on this one, if you are a sole trader and you're doing all right and you are moving into the new year, you want to be having a word with your accountant and talking about limited stuff because it is, I find it to be a lot better. Um, if anyone's got any telling me I'm wrong, to look in the comments. It's but funny I because it's a better uh, way. Breaking I, news. I said on Twitter. Breaking news. Sorry. Breaking, breaking news. news. Right. Oh. Breaking news. So I run a WhatsApp group. I created a WhatsApp group for electricians in Kent, right? Contracting electricians in Kent. Someone's just sent through a com a a a job for Gold Star FM, right? Oh, are they that? Are they? Uh, I don't know if I can say a bunch of robbing cunts who just no. So what they are the is one. a facilities management company. Ten pound an Sound hour, like a radio station. £10. £10 an hour? What on earth? Is that on earth, is it? <laughs> £10, £10 pounds. an hour, £80 a day. Wow. Electrical, one year one year experience required. But he's not limited. Who takes that job? All candidates need relevant qualifications and the use of van and tools. If you're qualified you in any way, an working for a tenner an hour, I will personally come on your ass and slap you fucking silly. Is that mental? Is that mental? What are they doing? Changing light bulbs or something? Yeah, I can change your B22D light bulb. <laughs> I get all the jobs I apply for or any agents put on to a different email address so I can turn it off on my phone so it doesn't ask me all day and I can also look at it and I do go look at it and I do seem like we want a Sparky to work in FM in a building doing all the maintenance on the HVAC, the air conditioning, the lighting, the plumbing and they're like, oh, we want to pay £9.50 an hour. You're like, what the fuck? Who's going to do that? But £10 an hour... Provide your own van and tools. Well, that that is wow. ten pound an hour. That that's going to cost you ten pound an hour, isn't it? Wow. That's is that a, is it a typo? People no. will try it though. These, these no, because people... they said eighty pound a day. So you can only work eight hours. <laughs> they walk Listen, among I'm us. I'm not being funny unless you are. So on on the site I'm working on, I'm I'm working on right now. The mates. And you, honestly, to be a mate on our site, you don't really need any qualifications. <laughs> Excuse me. Just an ECS card. It's £150 a day. And so it should be. No. But there are these mates. chances around. Come, me. Come on. For mates, £150 a day. <clears throat> that, that is strong in it. You'd like to think that the market would dictate, wouldn't you? And that uh, you get what you pay for. If they want to pay £80 a day for someone to do electrical work, well, Fair enough. No, you given. Let's let's see what happens. <laughs> and also, and then they can call the likes of us in to come and fix he's it. the only we'll person afterwards. still that I know <clears throat> that I've seen who says about it. And they're clever from on. You publish all your rates on the website, don't you? So if I get you in for four hours, I'm paying four times what's on your website. Yeah. So how many, rates, how yeah? many people are doing that? And fair play to you that for that. Oh, but, um, I have. I actually have. Let's put them up. That's true. <laughs> I've actually got an interesting story. I'm quite pissed at this stage. This was a fresh one. noticed. And now it's not. Right? About... Like they are rumours set. So, so this is actually an interesting story, and I think we're finished on it. I am struggling. <laughs> You're going to fucking finish on something in a minute. <laughs> so, about two weeks ago, a guy turns up on our site, and he goes, I just took this job. Because it's Christmas, I need the work, blah, 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 right? He was a gold card spark that took a mate's job at £150 a, £150 a day. And now we charge £240 a day um, for our sparks. Was there nothing else available? Could he not get anything else? Was he desperate? He was desperate. So what I'd done was... so. Like, obviously, because of my union days and all that sort of stuff, I won't stand for shit like that. So I phoned up I phoned up the agency and said, right, bump him up right now. That's not okay. So they bumped him up. 
he was such a dickhead. He was such a dickhead. I, so I turned around to him and I said, right, I've, I've got you bumped up. I've got you bumped up to Sparks rate. Um, yeah, I, I can't have you working on my site with a gold card and then makes money. He goes, oh, you didn't need to do that. I'm quite happy as, uh, as a mate. I was oh, like, I think, I think you mean thank you. I, I, I don't know, but I think you mean thank you. And he's like, no, no. Well, yeah, yeah thanks, mate. Yeah, cheers. Don't is, sobby is kids. That, is that unbelievable? No, it is unbelievable that I really like. I've got to mention Dave's bespoke graphic on his telly. How can you yeah, animate that conversation? You know why? Because you told the story last week, so I'm trying to gel over it. Oh, did I? Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, fuck, he's doing a story again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to move. I don't know that if I've listened to it. And on that bombshell, all the punters are over, like, oh, he's done this story in a week. <laughs> Because you can tell he's had half a bottle of scotch because he's recycling his tails. I'm sure you have. Go on, say it. What? Go on. You Monday can Club. The, you can do the outro. Monday Club, we're in. No. Monday Club, we're out. <laughs>